All righty, Wolfpack. Let's move on to my week 11 wide receiver, higher, lower, and Hail Mary. First guy I got to start off with is Gabe Daddy Davis in the Dome, coming off a great game, his second best of the year with 18 fantasy points, the wide receiver eight against Minnesota, now gets a Cleveland team giving up the third most deep yardage in the game. We cited that stat earlier with Tennessee. Right towards the top is Cleveland as well, playing right into Gabe Davis's strength. According to Fantasy Points, one of my favorite sites out there, their wide receiver cornerback matchups, Gabe Davis has the second best matchup of all wide receivers and really the only fantasy relevant guy uh, at the top of the list was Chris Moore at the top matchup right after him was Gabe Davis, who should smash now that they're on the turf, this team in the smithereens. I have him as a top 10 wide receiver, my wide receiver eight, that's plus seven, the ECR here. We get a lot of questions on Gabe Davis every week. Clearly planted my flag. You absolutely have to have this guy into your lineups. Now moving further down the list, I love Kadarius Tony. We hinted at this one talking about McCole Hardman, but 17 fantasy points last week on just 44% of the snaps. He is so damn explosive. And now you got McCole Hardman on the IR. You got Juju unlikely to play. You got Marquez Valdez Scantlin sucks and also very sick right now, too. So ultimately, Kadarius Tony could be the de facto number one wideout. Yes, I know Travis Kelsey going to lead this team, but I love Kadarius Tony in a uh, just the fact that he was a wide receiver 11 last week, a fringe, you know, a wide receiver one on 44% of slaps, just hints at how damn explosive he is, how great the scheme is at getting their best weapons open. I think Andy Reid is falling in love with this guy in front of our eyes. And if he gets an every down roll, like we saw wide receiver 11 last week, I really do think he has like a top three, honestly, ceiling. He was one of the best rookies in very limited games. Yes, but yards per route run, yards of separation, targets per route. Like the guy was so great in so many of the predictive metrics as a rookie. And now he is on the perfect scheme with the perfect situation with all these guys hurt around him. I think he's going to go berserk. Like I know I talked about Christian Watson as a stretch run guy. And I get, I love Christian Watson night plus 10 ECR on him. I'd rather have Tony in my lineups. And I think Tony is the guy that just goes completely bonkers here down the stretch. Huge fan of him. Wide receiver 15 on the week. That's 16 spots higher than the ECR. I'm planting my flag big time on Tony. Huge on him. We already mentioned that I am higher on Christian Watson. The only other guy I do want to mention is George Pickens, plus five ECR. My wide receiver 25 of the week had 13, 15, and zero across his last three games. The two of them being really studly efforts, top 11, top 23 wide receiver in those two quality games. Cincinnati's been pretty good against wideouts. I'll give him that. Tougher matchup, but I they've been banged up in the secondary. Two big injuries there, two of their top corners. We'll see how to buy if those guys are back. One of them, uh, Abu, Abu Wabi, forget his name. Uh, their top guy, though, is still on the IR, so we know he'll be at least out. And Pickens has been emerging as a more versatile threat, getting two rushes last week. You know, those Claypool type of money touches are going now to George Pickens. I think he is a great play and definitely within all my lineups. In terms of lower this week, Michael Pittman kicks it off. He's wide receiver 29, so certainly could be viable for you. But I just hate his role. He has seen one target over 15-plus air yards on the year. That came way back in week one. And since then, he has put up seven, nine, four, nine fantasy points across his last four games. Wide receiver 50, 42, 48, 37, yet we're ranking him as the wide receiver 18. Something has to give there. I actually like Paris Campbell more. This is a tough matchup. It's a really, really good Philadelphia secondary, a bottom five matchup for wide receivers in general, but in particular, really good against number one wideouts, really good against uh, the outside wide receivers as well. So I think this is a tough spot for Pittman. I would rather have Tony, as mentioned. I'd rather have Christian Watson uh, in my lineup. I got a lot of Michael Pittman questions tonight, and – uh, most of the time, I'm probably going to be turning the other way. Uh, again, top 30 wide receivers. So viable, yes, but give me Rondell Moore, Jacoby Myers, uh, those type of guys. A little bit lower on Cortland Sutton. I'm kind of shocked to see him ranked as a wide receiver one. Top 12, wide receiver 12 in the ECR. Now, I like Sutton this week, especially if Judy's out. Could be peppered with targets. But remember, the Raiders look good on paper as a matchup. They're actually one of the top teams against outside receivers and very, very generous two slot wideouts. Could Sutton just see a overwhelming target share? Yeah, absolutely with these guys out. He's had multiple games with 11 plus targets, but even in those games, he's never once finished above a wide receiver 15. 16 points is a season high in half PPR. 
obviously we would take that, but we're ranking him as a wide receiver 12. So that's like expecting 15 to 16 points. And lately over the last month, he has not top 66 yards. He has not top six catches. That's what he did last week. Before that, two catches, 14 yards, three for 23, one for 13. It has been a horrendous last month for him. 10 points is his high across the last month. And I don't know. Just the fact that we're ranking this guy as a no-brainer, top 12 receiver, a little bit, little bit questionable. Give me Watson. Give me Tony again over him. In terms of Hail Marys, I'll continue to sing him to the moon as Donovan Peoples-Jones as my first option here. He's still out there in well over half of leagues. He has had 11-plus half PPR fantasy points in five of his last six weeks. He had 70 or more yards in five of his last six weeks. And even his low was nine fantasy points. Yes, Buffalo, a tough matchup, but this is the type of guy you're going to need if you're going to keep pace in a track meet. And I think the schedule, uh, Buffalo is a good secondary, no doubt about it, but I think they can still be had on the deep plays. So I do like Donovan Peoples-Jones more than Drake London, more than Brandon Cooks, for example. I also love, love, love Darius Slayton, who's out there in even more leagues. I have him higher than Donovan Peoples-Jones. This was even before Wandell Robinson was ruled as a potential miss of this game. He's facing Detroit, a top three matchup for wide receivers. He himself has been money these last few weeks. Similar to Donovan Peoples-Jones, the floor is damn good with Darius Slayton as he's emerged as the number one guy here. He had one two-point done in week six against Baltimore. But other than that, 11, 13, 9, and 17 points in his last five weeks. Very, very viable. And now gets the best matchup he's had all season. I think Darius Slayton continues to build on that 95-yard touchdown effort last week against Houston, one of the better secondaries in the league, and just smashes this team deep. So those are two of my favorite wide receiver Hail Marys. I would continue to rec- uh, recommend you check. If you're really, really desperate, <laughs> maybe you look at Randall Cobb tonight. <laughs> Against a bad test, that's desperation. I, I mean, I, I puked while I just said that. So, I mean, I'm talking about like 1% rostered here. I still like going to Jahan Dotson. I think his role will continue to grow and increase. Terrace Marshall, another Hail Mary to potential to potentially throw out there. The last guy I want to mention is Ben Skoranek. Rumored to be taking over that Cooper Cup style role. We know he's not Cooper Cup. I would just laugh at anybody who would even suggest that I should go off and... <laughs> Never talk again if I would ever compare Ben Skoranek to Cooper Cup. But he's going to probably play that slot role with those high percentage layup target for targets against a very vulnerable New Orleans secondary, assuming Lattimore misses another one. So that's a guy that's out there in nearly every league if you're really, really desperate. But please look to some other options like Paris Campbell, Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, and uh, Darius Slayton, of course, before you go there. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.